What a Catch, Part 106, A Miraculous Ladybug Fan Fiction. If you have not heard the previous 105 parts of this story, you can find a link to them in the description box below. If you haven't already, make sure you've subscribed to this channel to stay up to date on the latest parts of your favorite fan fiction. Guilt ran rampant through Marinette's veins as she lightly teased Adrian's hair with her fingers. He had thrown up three times and was running a high fever. It was too early to say the worst was over, but his head was in her lap and she'd swaddled him in a blanket, so he'd be okay for now. So, Alia said, pulling up a chair, there's a lot to talk about, isn't there? Tears prickled Marinette's eyes. Yeah, both for me and him. She'd spent the last few years in a depression, feeling like less than a catch. When her memories were altered, Marinette thought she was a college dropout who hit her peak in high school but was now riddled with debt she could barely manage. The truth was, she graduated early and was supposed to be in a high position at her husband's company. She won design award after design award and could have her pick of brands to work with, it was scary. The two versions of her life clashed with the other, one confident, strong, and in love, and the other a withered version of herself, unable to confess to her crush because she felt like she couldn't live up to his accomplishments. The confidence she gained when making the decision to tell her friends she's Ladybug over the last two weeks helped with the transition, but Marinette had whiplash. So tell me, Alia said. Why did you run? From the altar? Yeah. Most people run before they say, I do. Not after. Marinette looked down at Adrian, a wave of shame flooding over her. It was the kiss. The kiss? But you two didn't kiss. I distinctly remember that. Oh, everyone does, Nino added. Marinette jumped at his voice, previously unaware of his presence behind the couch. Ooh, my tea? Alia asked, reaching out for a mug. I don't know why we didn't know he was akumatized earlier. All he has in his apartment is Tizan's. Marinette sighed and continued. It was the, you may now kiss your bride, that threw me off. What? Alia knit her eyebrows together. Why? Because all the 14-year-old me dreamed of was marrying Adrian Agrest. So? Congrats. You did it. But... What if that's all I'll ever do? Alia set her mug down on the coffee table. Marinette. I'm a, well, was a successful businesswoman. I have talent and merit on my own terms, but marrying Adrian would take away from that. I'm not following. Instead of being a world-renowned designer, I'm just... The wife of the Agrest brand. Huh. Anything I do, anything I am, will be second to that. Where people will say that whatever I accomplish is because of my adopted last name. You knew that before you said I do. Alia was right. She did. And I thought I was okay with it, but... But... What if one day I resented kissing him? In that moment? At all! Where the role of a wife becomes tiresome and it's long days of being an accessory at parties and galas. We both know Adrian would never do that to you. A lot of men in his position start out with good intentions. Marinette knew what it sounded like but it made sense at the time. Well, 
Would you do it again? Alia asked. Do what again? Marry him? Run away. If you were transported back in time and could do the moment after I do again, what would you do? She couldn't answer. She may be years older, but Marinette had little time to think about it. Did she regret it? Or just the circumstantial consequences? I don't know. Alia sighed and looked down at her mug, pondering what to say next. I'm sure this doesn't make you feel better. But Adrian would marry you again. He would propose time and time again, and throw a hundred weddings that you could run away from until you're comfortable enough to stay for the last one. He's the dream, Marinette murmured, running her fingers through his hair. She was right. He was that kind of over-the-top romantic. Then again, he had the budget and time for such romance. If he wasn't his own boss, or if he wasn't an heir, their dating style would be different. They'd still be just as much in love, but their life would take them down different paths. So why do you look like you're scared of him? She could always count on Alia to ask the hard questions. Because I hurt him. No, duh. You ran away from the altar after the I do. He'll get over it. No, I hurt Cat Noir. Cat Noir? And somehow that's worse than hurting Adrian. I'm not sure I follow. Cat Noir is my partner, my best friend. I'm not sure I follow. We're friends and partners, comrades, if you will, before anything thanks to us being Canor and Ladypug. But Atrian and Marinette? That relationship is that of classmates and notes passed between classes. It's cute and fun, a near-perfect romance, but it hasn't endured the kind of strain that being superheroes go through. But... You guys are the same, with or without the mask. I'm saying this relationship is built on trust from being partners. I would throw Adrian Agrest under the bus ten times if it meant saving Cat Noir. But you guys are the same people with or without the masks. You don't get it, Marinette sighed, and I don't know how to explain it better. Silence pattered between them as they listened to Adrian's breathing. It wasn't awkward, but they weren't comfortable either. Well, either way you'll have to talk to him when he wakes up, Nino said. The girl sighed, knowing he was right. I'll cross that bridge when we come to it, Marinette replied. She had no idea what she'd say to him, but she wasn't sure if she could apologize. She'd only be doing so to make herself feel better, and right now all she wanted to do was make sure Adrian was safe, both physically and mentally. Her drama would have to wait until he was stable. Stable enough to deal with her guilt. Thank you so much for listening. Part 107 is on the way. In the meantime, you can check out these other videos for more fanfiction. I'll catch you next time.